Okay, tip number two, manage your likability. Right? Whether you like it or not, whether you think you don't care what people think about you, being in the corporate world means working with other people. That's just how life is. You can't do things on your own. If you don't want to work with other people, you're better off as a freelancer, as an entrepreneur, a solo entrepreneur, or if you have enough capital, become the business owner so that you get to decide things on your own. Right? That's, that's the only way. But in the meantime, if you have to be an employee, you have to manage your reputation. You have to manage your likability. We call this, by the way, as EBA. And this is something I learned from my pharmaceutical company when I was in the corporate world. EBA stands for Emotional Bank Account. It is the amount of love you deposited in every colleague's heart. Right? So every time you become known for a good deed or achievement at work, you deposit more and more love. Your goal is to stock up enough love so that no matter how many mistakes you create, so every time you make a mistake, they keep on withdrawing from that bank account. So that's the vice versa. So if your bank account is so full of love, even if you make mistakes, even if you offend sometimes, you're still lovable. That's your goal in any company. Right? Again, I want to strike a balance. There's a difference between being paranoid and anxious too much versus with what people think about you versus having a healthy amount of consciousness of how other people like you. So that's EBA. So here's an example from Harvard Business Review, a study conducted in 2016. They surveyed thousands of employees based on which type of employees do you like to work with? One who's very competent, that's in the y-axis, and one who is likable, that's in the x-axis. And they asked the question, do you want to work with someone who is competent but not likable? Competent meaning he does well in his work. Likable means good attitude, good personality. Or do you want to work with someone who is likable but not competent, meaning the person needs more training, the person needs more guidance, but very amazing personality. So give me your answers, guys. Please choose. Which one do they prefer to work with? Competent or likable? Share your answers, please. Anyone? Okay. So I see a lot of people saying competent. Some people say also likable. So it's a mix. We have a, a very mixed crowd. You'll be surprised, guys. More than half, about 60% of the respondents said it's likable but not competent. Right? And again, ideally, in a really, really good world, the best situation should be uh, I am both competent and I'm also likable. The problem is not everyone is that perfect, right? Many times, people are have to be... Uh, the combination of both. But here's the interesting. They ask a follow-up question and they said to the participants, don't you think that you are sacrificing your work performance because you're working with someone who needs to be trained, who needs to improve further their performance? And you know what the respondents did? A lot of them said, well, true, they're not that good, but I rather prefer with someone who I like working with because attitude cannot be changed easily but skills can be taught in a short amount of time, right? So it really goes to show that likability is as important as your competency. No matter how good you are, if people don't want to work with you because you have a foul mouth or because you have such a, a really cold attitude on how you work with people, right? Which, by the way, in favor of those people, you can do more of that these days because you don't need to be seated beside someone at work, right? Okay, and so here's where I also ask the question, do you count your EBA per stakeholder, right? So for example, these are the people in your company. Being responsible for politics means being conscious which of those people are important for your promotion and how much EBA do you have. Vice president number one, I think he likes me and I think he knows me. 
I think my boss likes me a lot. I think my teammate who is still new doesn't like me at all. I think that HR who hired me is so-so. I think the vice president of another department, because I worked well with her yesterday and last week and last month, she loves me a lot. I think the CEO does not know me at all yet. So your goal, you know, I'm not asking you to do those things in Hollywood movies where you have photos of these people on your bedroom wall and you have like those scary, creepy things about what you think of each person. That's not what I'm asking. In your mind, you should have a mental map of these and asking yourself, which of them will decide your promotion? And that your goal in a span of two or three years you should be able to increase your lovability, your emotional bank account to the people who matter. Ideally, it should be to everyone, but at least for your promotion, it should be identifying who will decide your promotion in the deliberations, in the deliberations meeting. Right? I like this statement from Earn J. Placer. There are some who are competent but are not likable, and they are still promoted. Very true, unfortunately. In fact, I have worked with these kinds of clients. And when I shared my slides with them, they told me, John, in our company, attitude is important. But at the end of the day, we still promote people who can deliver money because money is important to the company. So at the back of my mind, I tell myself, all right, if that's what matters to you, then fine. But please don't get back to me because when we look at your numbers, the reason why you have a 20% resignation rate it's because the culture has become so toxic that people feel that the company is all about the money rather than relationships. You need to balance both, right? Okay. Ria Aguirre says, with yarns, connecting them on your wall. Yes, that's what I see in Hollywood movies. So don't be that creep. I'm not asking you to do that. At least in your mind, you have a mental map of these things, guys. So here's a question now. Last, uh, before we end the second part, do you count your emotional bank account per person, especially for those who matter? Yes, I'm always up to date. B, I, no, I think they're too subjective. Letter C, I didn't care until I realized in the last slide. Right? Okay, letter A, up to date. I see some answers. Very good. Letter B, I think they're too subjective. Yep, also true, guys. So this is really understanding what you perceive about how people love you and like you. Right? And again, if it's too subjective, how do you measure? You measure when someone deliberately says it. Remember, guys, it takes a lot of guts and a lot of humility to recognize someone's work. When someone says, wow, that was a good job, it takes sometimes effort and admission that they're bowing down to you and saying that you did a good job. So that's one good way to measure if you've really done a good job and the person likes you because of your performance.